what do you believe causes Alzheimer's? What are the negative effects of plaque buildup in the brain? Yeah, it's a great, great point. Um, and the research that we did over 30 years suggests a very different look at Alzheimer's. It, it suggests that Alzheimer's, what we call Alzheimer's, which is really just a pathology, um, Alzheimer's is actually an insufficiency. That is to say, there's a set of things that are required for driving synapse formation and synapse maintenance. And we call that synaptoblastic signaling. And it's trophic factors and it's nutritional factors and it's hormones and all these sorts of things. And on the other hand, and of course it's energetics, ketones and things like that. There is a whole set of things that are synaptoclastic that are pulling back. And that are, those are things like infl anything that's causing chronic inflammation and then things like toxins, the various toxins that we talked about earlier. And so your probability of developing Alzheimer's is proportional to an integral. So it, a, over time, summing up of the various negative, the synaptoclastic signals that we just talked about, divided by the synaptoblastic signals that we talked about. And by the way, this is no different than what happens with osteoporosis. There we have osteoclastic signals predominating over osteoblastic signals. This is no different than, you know, if you have two uh, groups, let's say you've got some contractors that work at your house. Let's say you got one set that does the demolition, one set that does the building. And let's say for 10 years, the guys that did the demolition always did extra and the guys that did the uh, construction never showed up. Your house would just start getting smaller. And that's exactly what's happening with osteoporosis and it's exactly what's happening with Alzheimer's disease. So we want to support the synaptoblastic signals and we wanna decrease the synaptoclastic signals. So the bottom line is Alzheimer's is caused by a set of factors that alters the balance in synaptic signaling that literally is an insufficiency in the ability to support that network. So in order to protect yourself, in order to deal with lower support, you are downsizing that network. And as you're doing that, you're making this protective amyloid. So the pathologist looks in there and says, aha, you have Alzheimer's disease. And we don't know what causes it. Well, we know a lot of things that, that, that contribute to it. And so this, when you say Alzheimer's disease, you should never put a period after Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease due to what? Uh, that's, it's like saying fever. Uh, fever due to what? And of course, in the 1600s, you could die of fever. But today we want to say, well, fever due to what? Was it COVID-19? You know, was it tuberculosis? Was it HIV? What, what was it that actually gave you that feature? Was it, you know, that fever? Was it pneumococcal pneumonia? Same thing with Alzheimer's. We need to, and in Alzheimer's, it's usually several things. We typically find between 10 and 25 different contributors. You need to ferret them out. You need to address those things. So Alzheimer's disease due to what? How do you know if you have cognitive decline and if it's getting worse? Yeah, I'm so glad you asked that question because it is critical. This is one of the biggest problems. Alzheimer's is a stealthy reaper. It will sneak up on you because the problem is, you know, we say, oh, I'm just getting a little older. Uh, and, you know, there's, there's an old joke about this because people will often tell me, oh, you know, my spouse is not that good either. You know, somewhere you know, we're probably just getting a little older. And there's a terrible old joke about, you know, a guy who said to his wife, he said, you know, I've noticed, you know, your memory is not quite what it should be. And I, I'm going to give you a little test. I want you to go in the kitchen and I want you to make uh, two scrambled eggs, uh, hash browns, two pieces of toast with butter uh, and, uh, and some black coffee. And I just want to give you, she says, hey, I can do that. No problem. I've got a great memory. She goes in and she hears the pans banging and she, you know, all these things. 15 minutes later, she walks out. She's got a parfait glass that's got ice cream. It's got some chocolate sauce on top. It's got some whipped cream. And he looks and he says, hey, you forgot the cherry. So the point is that so commonly um, we'll have multiple people and they say, well, you know, the other one's about the same. They all think that they're just getting a little older. In fact, we should not be having such symptoms. 
as you know, people get to 100 and often do, are very sharp. So if you're having problems, if you have changes, you're not remembering things as well, or you're having trouble at your job, or you're having trouble remembering, remembering your keys, this is a red flag. Now, people will say, oh, it's probably not Alzheimer's. Well, it may or may not be, but down the line, you could be heading for Alzheimer's. So this is why we recommend that everybody who's 45 years or older, get a cognoscopy. Just as when you turn 50, everybody knows you should get a colonoscopy. Please get a cognoscopy when you turn 45 or older and make sure that everything's okay. And if you begin to have changes, you begin to see that you're not so sharp, don't let someone tell you, oh yeah, you know, you're 52 and you're just getting older because you should actually be sharp until you're 100. And so let's make sure that you, you can do this. And in fact, it sneaks up on you because of that. And so frequently what'll happen is doctors will say, you know, you know, I think you're just getting a little older, but you know, come back in a year. Come, and they keep saying, come back in a year, come back in a year. And then they finally say, oh, sorry, it's Alzheimer's. There's nothing we can do about it. Well, in fact, the earlier you start, the more there is to do about it, the easier it is. And we see people all the time who dramatically improve their scores with cognitive assessment. So please start early. Don't let it sneak up on you. And actually, you know, Alzheimer's should be a rare disease. This should be uncommon because we can address these various insufficiencies. And therefore, if to do that, please get started early because it's so much easier when you get started early. And I should just add one more thing, which is there are two general presentations for people who are on their way to Alzheimer's. About two thirds of people, it's memory. As you know, that's the common thing. My memory is not what it used to be. And it's specifically recent memory. So they'll, they'll still remember their first grade teacher often, but they won't remember what they had for breakfast this morning or where their keys are, things like that. But about a third of people present with a non-amnestic presentation. That is to say that it's not so much about the memory. And those people, it's other things. Things. It's facial recognition, it's word finding, it's organization, that's a big one, so so-called executive dysfunction. So people can't organize things and get everything together. They'll get a new iPhone and they just can't kind of put it all together. Um, they can't, uh, they can't uh, organize things at their job. These are the ones that tend to lose their jobs the most quickly uh, because you can do pretty well with a not great memory for a long time because you've learned so many things earlier in your life. And, you know, it's interesting that, that, that this is the way the brain downsizes. If I said to you, okay, you have a choice. You can wake up tomorrow morning and you can either forget how to do your job, how to speak, how to breathe, how to do one of these critical things, or you can forget the friends rerun from tonight. That's an easy choice. And that's the choice your brain is making most of the time when things aren't good. Like, okay, I can do pretty well with what I already have. And that's why, by the way, people go for years and years and years and do fairly well. And unfortunately, they're hurting themselves in, if they don't get started early. That is the canary in the mind telling you something's wrong. So you may have these non-amnestic symptoms as well. Uh, Dyscalculia uh, is another one, your problem with making a tip, paying bills, any sort of calculations. So please take heed of those things early on and get in, get evaluated and get on uh, prevention or if you've got symptoms already, of course it's reversal and you can do very, very well.